Monsieur Gibbons est un expert mondialement reconnu dans le domaine de la gravitation et des trous noirs. Et euh, au sein de notre laboratoire, le noyau historique de, de, de recherche en, était en physique théorique sur la gravitation et le trou noir. C'est depuis maintenant à peu près dix ans que le professeur Gibbons nous rend visite dans, à l'Université de Tours en général et à notre équipe en particulier. Et au fil de ces, de ces décennies, euh, notre activité en gravitation s'est développée dans une synthèse particulièrement fructueuse, pas seulement au niveau de la, euh, du sujet de la gravitation elle-même, mais surtout, et c'est ça qui est la partie subtile, sur les euh, connexions avec d'autres domaines apparemment lointains de la physique, et c'est là où le savoir-faire du professeur Gibbons nous a été particulièrement euh, précieux. Maintenant, j'appelle mon collègue Sergei Solodukin, professeur à l'Université de Tours, au laboratoire de, de mathématiques et physique théorique, qui pourra nous prononcer quel, quelques, quelques mots de présentation de Gary. Euh, monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Vice-président, les collègues, c'est un grand honneur pour moi aujourd'hui de présenter pour vous Gary Gibbons. Je uh, dirais que nous organisons un Work, what we call workshop uh, to celebrate Gary's contribution to theoretical physics. I started yesterday and it will finish today, uh, tomorrow. And uh, uh, I will start with some uh, facts of Gary's biography. Uh, Gary uh, educated, well, he had his undergraduate studies at uh, St. Catherine College at the University of Cambridge. And his specialization was theoretical physics. Okay. His specialization was theoretical physics. And then, uh, still in, in Cambridge, he uh, continued his studies as a uh, PhD student. And first, uh, uh, his uh, PhD advisor was Dennis uh, Siama. And Dennis uh, has left Uh, for Cambridge, and um, immediately after that, Stephen Hawking became a PG advisor of Gary, and uh, it was a crucial, uh, I think, moment for Gary, and because uh, they, they wrote so many uh, wonderful papers, and uh, it was very important con uh, collaboration for many years. So initially, uh, the plan for his for his. Uh, Uh, PhD te thesis was uh, to study gravitational radiation, and as I learned yesterday from the talk of uh, Bruce Allen on our workshop, that it was pretty, in the beginning, it was pretty experimental uh, pro project. We wanted to detect uh, gravitational waves uh, in the basement of a uh, uh, university building uh, in Cambridge. But fortunately for us, uh, this project wasn't fi funded, otherwise we would lose two brilliant um, theoreticians. Uh, but it continued as a purely theoretical, theoretical uh, uh, study, uh, and it was, uh, the thesis was submitted in October 1972. Then uh, for uh, one year, Gary was in, in Germany, at Max Planck Institute of Astrophysics. And apparently, as G Gary was saying, it's, it was an important year, uh, because at that, at that moment he was writing papers, uh, important papers with uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. And then, uh, since then, he permanently, uh, in, at the University of Cambridge, He became a full professor in 1997, fellow of the Royal Society in 1999, and fellow of Trinity College in 2002. Uh, Gary is an excellent, uh, brilliant teacher. I asked recently how many PhD students he has. He said around 20. Well, mathematicians uh, know this number exactly. Uh, in the mathematical 
a genealogy project. They say that Gary has exactly 24 students and 44 descendants. And well, on this picture, you see Gary lecturing uh, here in Tour. Uh, two years ago, he gave a, a master course for, uh, for our master students on black holes. And I should say that probably this number should be corrected because now we have students, he has students in Tour. Uh, collaboration of Gary with uh, uh, scientists in Tour has started in around 1991, when Gary and Professor Horvati, Peter Horvati, and Professor Duval from Marseille wrote an interesting paper, uh, Celestial Mechanics, Conformal Structures and uh, Gravitational Waves. And I should say this paper is like uh, a good wine. With time, its value only increases and became very popular recently. Uh, on this picture, you, you see in the center, uh, Gary. On left is Professor uh, Peter Horvati from Tour. And on the right, uh, you see Chris, uh, Christian, Christine, uh, who is the wife of uh, Gary Gibbons. Uh, well, uh, Gary was, since 1991, he was visiting uh, quite often the uh, University of Tours. We organized several conferences where uh, uh, Gary participated actively. And I remember in 19, uh, in five, five years ago, I was in, uh, uh, in Santa Barbara on some conference, and we, I met uh, Gary Gibbons, and he said that he wanted to continue our well, contacts with people, scientists in Tour more closely for a longer period. And we started to look for some solutions uh, to invite Gary. And hope, uh, fortunately for us, uh, the studium uh, provided such a wonderful possibility to invite Gary for a period of five, uh, four years. So each year he can stay at our dep uh, department, at our laboratory for three months. And since then, uh, well, in these four years, this year is the last trimester for Gary, we organized four, four workshops, and Gary gave several talks organized by the studio. Uh, well, we are living in a world of very narrow specialization, where sometimes people sit in the same, sharing the same office, not always understand what the other person is doing. And Gary is a remarkable example of a universal scientist who belongs uh, to, at the same time to different uh, communities. First, of course, it's a community studying uh, general activity, black holes. Uh, then second community, uh, string theory, very ambitious uh, direction of research. And uh, I know that many mathematicians think that Gary is a mathematician. He belongs also to the geometrical community. Uh, and that's why, uh, well, his research has focused, well, during these years on three different uh, main directions, gravitation, solitons, and symmetries. And in fact, we organized, uh, our first conference we organized with the studium has this title, gravitation, uh, solitons, and symmetries. And this year we have, uh, uh, be organizing a workshop with the same title. So uh, the main subject of research of Gary Gibbons are black holes. Uh, so let me say just two words about black holes. Black holes are fascinating, uh, interesting objects which uh, initially appeared as purely theoretical uh, prediction of uh, Einstein theory. And it describes uh, some dramatic uh, deviation of uh, space-time from what we have in our ordinary life. But uh, uh, as became clear uh, recently, black holes are, uh, well, exist in practically in each um, uh, galaxy. In our Milky Way, there is a massive, in the central Milky Way, there is a massive supermassive black hole. And in fact, uh, uh, last year it was discovered 
uh, gravitational wave signal, which originated from a merger of two supermassive black holes. And I guess that was exactly what Gary was planning to observe with Hawking in the basement of Dant. Uh, well, this equi new equipment is so sophisticated that uh, it would not fit probably any basement in, the, in Cambridge. So uh, Gary made a fundamental contribution to physics of black holes. And this contribution, uh, well, has many, uh, many levels. Uh, let me focus on just one such a most uh, maybe important contribution. In 1990, uh, 1977, Gary Gibbons and uh, Stephen Haw Hawking, they wrote two famous papers where basically created the field. They uh, showed how uh, consistently apply laws of thermodynamics to black holes and uh, even to the whole, to entire universe. So this field, uh, this Two papers created a new field which is called uh, Euclidean approach to quantum gravity and also has a relation to geometry because in uh, what is quantum, uh, Euclidean quantum gravity is just a fancy way to count uh, geometries. Uh, many other important contributions, uh, publications with people, uh, various people, uh, some of them are present in this uh, in this uh, auditorium. I tried to count uh, number, well, uh, his uh, collaborators, but then I give up because there are so many of them. And I'm proud to say that now there are also many people in tour which are collaborating with Gary and uh, discussing with him uh, ideas, exchanging ideas, also physicists and mathematicians. Uh, uh, so, in 1956, uh, Paul Dirac, who was at that time holding the same chair as later was occupied by Stephen Hawking, was visiting Moscow University. And when visiting um, a theoretical physics department, he was asked uh, by Professor Ivanenko to write some, build a chalk just on the wall of his uh, office, uh, most important phrase, uh, he thinks uh, it's worth writing. And Dirac wrote uh, what you see here in this slide, physical law should have mathematical beauty. So if I wanted to, in one sentence, formulate Gary's uh, view on physics, that would be exactly this phrase. So let me give the word to uh, Emmanuel Zin. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Sergei. And now we'll, we will give this distinction to Professor Gary Gibbons, please. And I call Philippe Hendrix, President of the University, and Jean Fabry, which is, who, who is, who is, excuse me, Director of the Faculty of Science and Technology. Professor Gary Gibbons. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of the university, and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by expressing my deep gratitude for the award of this honorary doctorate. I understand from a talk that uh, Professor Lassine gave yesterday at the beginning of our conference that since the foundation of the university in 1970, there have been 
three, uh, sorry, two theoretical physicists who received this honor, Werner Israel and um, Ludwig Fadeev. They are both in almost giants in our field. Not only are they giants in our field, their work has deeply influenced my own. Werner Israel, whom I know well, uh, is one of the founders of the present theory of black holes, as you've heard it from Sergei Soloduki, uh, that that is one of my principal research interests. And Ludwig Fadeev has made enormous contributions to the attempt to quantize gravity, which means to combine Einstein's theory of gravity with the basic laws of quantum mechanics. And that has also been a theme in my research work. But as I say, they are truly giants, and I feel truly humbled to be uh, invited to join their company. In addition uh, to thanking uh, the University of Tours, uh, I would like uh, to say a few words about why I've been here and my connection with Tours. As Professor Soledukin uh, told you, the first time that I came to Tours and I visited the Laboratoire de Mathematique et Physique Théorique, which is where I presently am, uh, was around 1991 when I came to visit Professor Horvati uh, to uh, continue and complete our work with Professor uh, Duval from Marseille, who's with us this evening, uh, on a project which uh, had arisen from conversations between myself and Professor uh, Horvati in Cambridge. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, it's a project which I cherish and we are still working on. As you've heard from uh, Professor Soloduki, my early work in Cambridge was on gravitational waves, and he's also told you of the importance of this subject, its continuing importance, and the brilliant uh, observations of gravitational waves which we've been discussing uh, at our conference. Um, so I knew a lot about gravitational waves, and uh, what I didn't know was the discovery by, amongst others, Professor Duval, is that there is a way of regarding the theory of gravitational waves, which I'd studied, as including all of classical mechanics, all of the mechanics of Galileo and Newton, as a special case. That's a very exciting example of what I cherish in theoretical physics, which is to put different ideas together and subsume them in one simple and hopefully beautiful framework. And we've continued our work since then, and we are continuing to work here in tour. That was uh, my first acquaintance with tour, and since that time, I have revisited on a number of occasions uh, because of conferences and other things. But my present presence in tour, I owe to a professorship not given by the university per se, but from what is called Le Studium. So I hold the Le Studium chair, which is funded by an organization which many of you will know of, Le Studium, and enabled, has enabled me to spend three months in tour for the past four years. This is the last uh, sojourn that I shall have uh, here. I want to pay a tribute to the imagination of the founder of Le Studium, a professor here, uh, who, uh, or a professor in, in the region, who uh, formulated the idea of bringing together scholars from outside of uh, the region to collaborate with people in the region. I'd also like to pay tribute to the efficiency uh, and kindness of those who work for Le Studium and make, have certainly made my experience here um, uh, a very pleasant one. They've smoothed over practical difficulties and they've played a, a major role in organizing four conferences in the laboratoire uh, in connection with my visit. I'd also like to thank Professor Soledukin, who is the, my host in uh, tour, associated with this Le Studium chair. It was he who formulated the idea of making an application, and it is he who's done lots of the administrative work. 
I first met Professor Soledukin uh, during a visit to EH, uh, S, the Institute for Haute Etude in uh, bois sur rivette in the south of Paris, where I was spending some time at the invitation of Professor Damour, who is in the audience here. And uh, I gave a seminar, and some of the ideas struck a chord with Professor Soledukin, and it turned out we wrote uh, a paper. We're still working on the similar topics. It tried to link uh, causality, which is a very deep concept in physics, with the geometry of space-time. Um, I had, at that stage, Professor Soledukin was working in the institute there, and later, of course, he's moved to uh, Tours. I'd like to say just a few words about Tours itself, and these are rather personal impressions. It is a beautiful city, and it's well known both for its buildings, its architecture, and also um, for um, its uh, cuisine and its wines. And I can certainly confirm that uh, the reputation it has is justly deserved. It also is often regarded as the um, city of the Renaissance, because it's here that Francois Premier uh, initiated the, the uh, Renaissance in France, and many of the buildings reflect that impulse. But I'd like to say something else, um, which relates to the fact that, as you heard from Professor Solidukin, I have spent my career in Cambridge, which is quite an old university, 800 years or so. Uh, it has celebrated its uh, 800th anniversary in 2009. It's essentially a medieval university, and uh, I have to say, occasionally when one is frustrated, it still has a very medieval mind, rather like the University of Oxford, which we heard about. Um, but actually, in the way of science and the link between um, uh, technology, uh, mathematics rather, uh, it's uh, really a newcomer. And also the Renaissance, which uh, I mentioned, is only one of many Renaissances. And whilst spending time here and reading about Tour, I discovered uh, much more ancient links between the world of learning in the UK and the world of learning in France. So the first Renaissance was the Carolinian Renaissance in the end of the 7th and 8th centuries. And it's well known to historians that an English scholar, Alcuin, came here. He started going to Charlemagne's uh, uh, um, capital at Aix-en-Chapelle, played a big role in reviving learning in um, France at that time, but he ended his days here in Tours at the uh, uh, Sanctuary of Saint Martin and also at the uh, Abbey of uh, Le Moutier. Alcuin was a multi-talented person and by the standards of mathematics of the day, he was able to teach mathematics here in Tours. A little later, um, and before the foundation of certainly Cambridge and probably Oxford, another Englishman came from England here to study, perhaps one of the biggest contributors to mathematics in uh, the medieval world, uh, Adelard of Bath, who, amongst other things, was the first person to translate uh, Euclid's books uh, into Latin, which, of course, was the language uh, of learning at that time. So that was around about the 12th century, and the Renaissance in question is called by historians the 12th century Renaissance, the revival of learning after the ghastly happenings, the terrorism and the rest of it of the Dark Ages. And I think it's interesting that this affirms two separate things. Firstly, that Tours has always been a city of science, although not necessarily a city with a university, but it has a long tradition of learning and scholarship. 
And the other thing that this affirms is the international nature of learning and scholarship. English people coming to France, admittedly the English and the French are hardly different from one another, but at least it's progress and, um, and shows that uh, the tradition that the university here continues is one of great antiquity. And I have to say, in compliment to my hosts here in the uh, laboratoire, that they are continuing a grand tradition. It's also a great tradition of internationalism. And so I think that's, I leave you with that, what I believe to be an optimistic viewpoint, despite the current difficulties and, and dangers, that if we adhere to a notion of international solidarity, and uh, if we adhere to the idea that peoples of all religions and all persuasions uh, and all nations have common interests and they should preserve those common interests, then perhaps uh, affairs will not look quite so gloomy as has been portrayed. Well, with that, I'd like to thank the university once more and its kindness to me, and uh, I'll leave you with the brief thoughts that I've given you. Thank you very much.